We all good? Uh, yeah, good, good, cool. Uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, Mitchell, two first names, I know. Um, I want to talk to you about React Native. Uh, unlike uh, our previous talk, I, I did work on React Native. Um, so I, I just use it. Uh, I don't really know, I'm not an expert on it. Uh, I just know what, what not to do. So a little bit experience in it, I guess. Um, and I'm here to talk to you why it's, I think it's the best way to write mobile apps, uh, except for like games and stuff, because you know, you need native performance for those sort of things. So um, yeah. Uh, heads up, anyone who's heard of React Native? Oh, everyone. Ah, good. Has anyone used it? Anyone release anything in production? <laughs> anyone work on it? Anyone here from Facebook? No? <laughs> okay. Jason. So, I don't know. Oh, there we go. So, this is a sort of timeline of my life in development. Um, it was about this sort of this sort of area here where I um, learned about React Native, and um, I started off uh, at work. I was basically given a task of writing a mobile app, and I had no experience writing a mobile app, so I didn't want to learn Java because I learned that at uni and I hated it. Um, and so I decided, oh look, I'll try leveraging my skills as a uh, web developer by using JavaScript, and I'll see what's out there. And I came across a few things like Apache Cordova. Um, I did write an app and I released it. It's actually in the App Store, but I'm not telling you what it is. Um, and then I was basically tasked with writing another one, and I looked at my options. I said that was just terrible. Like, you know, JavaScript is cool. Um, and I thought, well, you know, what's my other thing? So I tried things like Xamarin uh, and Xamarin Forms, which is basically the same sort of thing, but you can write it more cross more cross platform ish. Um, and so this sort of thing with my workplace where the boss was like, oh, look, you just, just make an app across platform, that's easy, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, I'll try my best. Like, it, I was just basically trying to, you know, oh, I just went ahead of that. You know, write an app as fast as possible for both, platform, both platforms. And this is a very technical graph. Um, it'll tell you how I sort of feel about all the other platforms. Uh, can you guys see on that screen? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. So uh, down in the nativeness end, you've got native, um, very native, not very cross-platformish though. So, uh, but then you've got things like Apache Cordova, very cross-platformish, but not a native feel to it at all. It's horrible. Uh, you've got things where you slide up and it just slides off the page like a web, like website would. That's fine. Um, but you know, when you want to sort of leverage those two you know, powerful um, axes together you get things like Xamarin and Xamarin Forms, which do offer this sort of cross-platformness, but they don't, and, and the native feel, but when it comes down to it, I find, especially when working with, with, with Xamarin, I did sort of write out in Xamarin too, and I find if you're really just pulling data from an API, you're not, you're not really leveraging that much of that cross-platformness. You sort of just end up writing about 20% cross-platform, that's really just querying an API. And that was great in .NET, but it's just like, end up just spending 60% of the code in just like UI and a whole another 20% just flew away because I can't do math. So, and then I also tried Xamarin Forms and it just, you get that, you do get more cross-platformness but you don't get that nativeness. That comes with supporting Windows Phone. Um, and but then I was told about, while well, I was working on Xamarin Forms, I was told by a coworker to check out React Native and I said, oh, you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> And then I quickly failed in my apps and I went back to React Native, very humbly, of course. And I quickly got a you know, prototype up in a couple of days and I was amazed about how quick and easy it was. So yeah, that's sort of just why I kept falling in love with it. And I can't go to the next slide, there you go. So why React Native? But what, what is React Native instead? Um, it's just like React, but for mobile applications, you're doing the same sort of thing, you're just writing components, you're, doing all that sort of stuff, you just don't have the web component. Instead, all your stuff gets basically converted into actual native iOS and Android components. And that's really cool because you get the native performance without getting that clunky web feel. Uh, what's the way how to, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not just HTML wrapped in a web view like other uh, things are. And again, those sort of platforms are getting better. So, uh, still react native. Uh, why do I love it? Uh, you don't have to use stinky Java or Objective-C or Squid. Um, sorry, people who like that. 
I'm oh, sorry. Uh, and you still, get the native, you still get the native performance, which is great. Um, some other really cool features, uh, you get to bypass the ludicrous App Store updates on both platforms. Um, so you can just, you can ship uh, your apps through a thing called CodePush, and that basically just uh, loads your JavaScript bundle straight to someone's application without like doing a proper update. It just, uh, it just updates when you open up your app, and there's an update available. And you also set things like rolling out to like 60% of your users. It's, and you can't just force an update, they do have to agree to it. Um, although that would be fun being able to just force an update because you solve that issue of having multiple versions. <laughs> um, you know, but also, you know, it, it improves my developer experience. I, I was a web developer, I'm now a mobile developer, and you can all be too, but it's one simple trick. Um, and by doing that also, you also get some great things like 90% code share on between the Android and iOS app, which I do currently have. It's good stuff. It's nice to feel that you have one code base and 90% of it you can just run on both platforms. Things that aren't, you can't really code share, sometimes you need to have some native components. So you need to actually dive into the stinky <coughs> code and do some stuff, but fine. You get all this other really cool stuff. And there's some things like maybe there's an Android only component like the, oh, I do like the look of the native Android day picker, so I like to use that instead of the cross-platform one. Or some lazy. Okay, where am I now? So this is a very proven theorem. Uh, if it exists, it will eventually be able to write in, in JavaScript. I can't spell. Um, that's also true. And this is my sort of uh, corollary. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's basically, if you can write it, write it in JavaScript, you can write it in React. So we can prove that right now. So uh, desktop applications, you can write them in JavaScript, also write them in React. Um, websites, you can write them in JavaScript, you can also write them in React. Um, Outlook add-ins, yep, you can do that too, that's amazing. Um, so why not mobile applications? And what are the benefits? Um, we well, only need to know JavaScript and React will help too, but I, I learned React through React Native, which does have its detriments as I come to work on the website as well. Uh, but it, it's a good way to kill two birds with one stone. Basically, in my work, uh, I was tasked with A, learning React, and B, writing an app, so I thought this is the perfect opportunity, opportunity to you know, learn both. And it has both iOS and Android, and plus other platforms with the same code base. So you can, there's also third party extensions like um, the Universal Windows platform. And Mac OS, don't quote me on that. And also web, which is just totally going full circle. You can you know, write React Native and it goes into web. But only one code base, so that's exciting. But anyways, you have all platforms in your code share sort of drops. Um, yeah, so you can basically write mobile apps like a website and you can write them fast. Uh, you can have really cool features like hot reloading and sort of like CSS, sort of when I say it's one of those like really cool JavaScript CSSs, but <laughs> it is still like it. Um, and you do have some cool browser de debugging and mobile debugging as well, so that's all nice and fun, which I'll show you later. Uh, that, that's like the sort of menu, developer menu, that can come up on the app, so you just sort of shake your phone and that comes up, and yeah, you can just reload your bundle. Uh, React Native comes with a own package up. So, you know, although Webpack is amazing and you can do so many great things with it, it's very customizable, it, it sort of just takes all the pain away from you and just does it all by itself. And there's just some little things you can customize, but it, it, it sort of just bundles it all in for, 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 for you. And also bundles in great things like uh, Babel with ES5 and 6 and 7 and all that beautiful stuff. Like you can just do fetches and awaits right out of the box. Yeah, so that was fun. That was from when I tried to do the same sort of thing on our website and realized I had to actually do stuff to get it working. <laughs> um, and you know, it works, it's, it's just a JavaScript application. You can do your normal testing and linting suites and typing suites as well. If you use like Flow or TypeScript or, uh, this time I wrote TypeScript, when I tried to set it up, it was like 1.8 and it was like really hard to do. But you know, apparently it's really good now. Uh, and you know, testing and all that sweet stuff. Uh, Jess is really good for it because you know, Facebook's taking over the world. Um, yeah, so it, it's like React's little little brother. Yeah, it, it's it's not getting it's not getting there. It's maybe it's like teenage stages where React, I guess, could be called an adult at the moment.
moment. Uh, monthly releases currently at 0.44 as of the other day, and you know every release is you know either adding new features or improving performance. Or yeah, uh, I've said it all. Um, yeah, they're very well documented and it's open source like React, so feel free to hop on and I don't know put in a ASCII art or something like that. And there is some really cool packages, third-party packages like React Native Interact, which is made by Wix. It's a, it's a big contrast, but you've got all these weird companies like Weeps and Microsoft which are releasing tools for React Native. So the whole code push thing I mentioned was actually written by Microsoft. And they've got a whole mobile platform, uh, online platform, which handles all your CI and CD for React Native and other applications as well. But yeah, it's crazy that a company like this are actually backing it and you know, stuff like Airbnb and Facebook, of course. And I'm sorry, my note, I don't know, Tesla, I think. Are all writing apps in React Native and releasing their tooling and other stuff to what we're talking. It's not good. Not real good. Okay, all good. Yeah, that's all the problem. Uh, oh yeah, of course. If you if you do use these other third-party packages for supporting other platforms, they're not they're not unofficial. They're unofficial packages, not supported by Facebook. But UWP is managed by Microsoft, so I know take that with a grain of salt. Oh, okay, so this is good because this is a good cue to remind me to go to my code and stop talking. <coughs> Here's my code. So as you can see, it looks pretty similar to a normal React application. Um, don't worry about it. This is just to get my animations working in a really hacky way. Yeah, can everyone see? Should I zoom out? Zoom out in? Am I going too far? Thank you. Um, so, you guys have all seen React, I'm sure. I said it's taking over this meetup. Um, so this is just a basic. It's totally no, this is the right page. So I've basically just got a nice little scroll view, which is a React Native component. If you see at the top, I'm importing just some React Native components. So you got instead of your native web stuff like you did in your H ones and your anchor tags, which I think learned the name of like a month ago. Um, yeah, you got text, of course text, you got text inputs, view, um, images, scroll view, that's all stuff that is uh, cross-platform. So a text component from React Native will render to the native components in iOS and Android. So you got your your view will render to a, I think they call it a UI view. I've never done iOS native development, so. And then I've also just imported React, of course, because you know, the big brother has to work over the little brother. And I've got just some custom components and styling I've got in there, so it's, it's nothing too crazy. Um, and so this is just a nice little scroll. It's a nice little scroll view with some buttons. And, yeah, but this is actually just a side project I'm working on. I decided to lap, you know, put on a mobile app just for fun and to teach my friends how to learn React Native, so feel free to check it out. I'll put some info on later. And yeah, so we've got. Yeah, but I'll just show you. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk some more. I'm gonna set the build process to go. I did this last night at like 1 a.m. So if it works, I'm gonna be the happiest man in the world. So it's just nice little. Um, hey, that's just gonna start doing some stuff like clearing caches to make sure it doesn't, you know, break. Linting because you know code style is important. And then we'll just go to some custom components. Nice little red underlines. So a touch pull opacity is just React Native's version of a, a button. It's really simple, just a, a view that has an on-click thing to it. And this is where the React Native bundle is, starts up, the packager. And that'll output some of the error messages too, which are usually pretty good, but sometimes aren't, as with all. And you can see it's doing all the Java compilation and all that because I have an Android phone. And hopefully it'll go to my phone and we'll be happy and I can show you some, yeah. Uh, well, then you don't need to compile it, you can't run it Yeah, I don't know, I just, I just like. No, I'm asking you. Oh, sorry. What was the mission? Can you just uh, run it in a browser? I'd be just developing it. Um, you don't want to run that every time. 
Uh, once you set it up, it's you can do some cool things like pop reloading and other things. So basically, just hit it once, let it run, let it run, and then you can easily change stuff. Makes sense. Uh, you can run it through a emulator, Android or iOS. It, it's apparently it's super easy on Macs. So I don't have a Mac at work. We do actually. I just don't use it much. Um, so yeah, what I'm, I'm running on my um, physical device at the moment, and I've got to screencast it to the laptop because I couldn't get the actual um, virtual device running last night because I only had an hour to do it. This is yeah, my partner's laptop. She's working on a thesis. So, and this is the JavaScript bundle that is getting sent to the phone, and currently it's happening on my app. I should bring that up for you. There we go. This is my amazing app that's going to change your, change your life. You can do cool things like spin a button. <laughs> um, this is a cool one, actually. My, my friend, he's not a great native, I'm teaching him. He said, okay, well, I just want to make an import where you type and a thing spins next to it. <laughs> okay, why not? So here we go. Oh, it's, a bag. <laughs> it's a chicken that spins. <laughs> and that's just leveraging the, um, the React Native animated library, which does cross platform animations. Um, a little bit clunky, but it's really cool. Uh, so I'm going to show some things like buttons. Well, not that button. These are disabled buttons. As you can quite clearly see, they are gray. Um, and then we're going to go to some navigation. So this is just a animation library, so coming the default one after a few have come and gone. And as you can see, these are actually natively rendered components because they do have the nice, what's the, uh, what's the word for it? The material UI, the material design, ripple. So. That's cool. So now I'm gonna show you the power of reloading. So I'm gonna shake my phone and this menu pops up. We can do some cool things like Said, or go to the depth setting. We'll do something not cool. Um, and this is basically just a quick menu that you can, you know, minify your code and make it run a bit faster. Uh, you can also do some things like a performance monitor just to monitor your animations and all that. So as you can see, my JavaScript FPS drops a little bit, but my UI is at a smooth, silky smooth 60 FPS. And now we'll just go to the cool stuff. So for hot reloading, it's just going to re-download the whole bundle and add, add on some extra stuff, just for good measure. Yeah, can we sort of see that? Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit some styling. Um, get rid of very hard coding with one hand. I struggle with two hands, you know? So, because I'm lazy, I've set up variables. Uh, so I'm just going to change this to a nice success. And I'll hit save. And there you go. I've changed the color of my background. How would be useful. So styling's all fun in games. I can, I can change other font sizes and stuff. And that'll just uh, re like download the bundle very quickly and have a really big title. Yeah, UX is not my strong point. Uh, so if we go to the page now, we can actually start seeing changing other things apart from styles. Um, I'm put in another button here. This is, yeah, so this is just a custom component I've done. Oh my God, I'm just putting this down. another button down here. And this is just wrapped in a scroll view, so we can just get out and down. But I've got another nice, another nice button here, and that does nothing. That's all nice and fun. Um, yeah, so uh, to answer your question from before, it's, it's not too hard. With React Native, the whole thing is that it's a bit of a pain in the ass to set up. The setup to get it all working is a bit hunky-dory. Um, to, you know, bundling and running your code on your phone is a bit hunky dory, but once it's once it's going, it's all good. You don't have to worry about it. You can just, you know, keep going, and you're all happy. Um, one other thing I'll show you is remote debugging. Where's the button? JS. 
Now, I haven't noticed in a while because it used to be really, really slow on Android, but apparently it's fast now. So, I can basically all those nice little mind blanks. There we go, we've got a warning. That's great. Android is deprecated. Um, so, I can see things when I go, it gives me back my navigation stack. I don't know why, I didn't request it. But yeah, so then we can start putting, you know, proper web debugging on there. Um, yeah. Need to present this first, hang on. So yeah, any questions for now? Um, hope that was interesting. Uh, if you're interested in more React Native, there's plenty of good tutorials out there. Check out, go into the Discord React Blocks if you haven't already. It's a big Discord channel for React and React Native goodness. And really, I think, too. Um, that's me on there. It's a celery man and my GitHub as well. I know that's not a celery, that's, that's lettuce. <laughs> yeah. So any questions on React Native and any other? Yeah. Yeah, so Create React Native app was released about a month or two ago. And uh, I did, as soon as it came out, I loaded it up. What it does is there's this company called Expo, or Exponent. They used to be called Exponent. And they basically make it so that the whole React Native process can be made like easier. So you don't have to worry about all this bundling stuff. They basically got an app which you download, and you basically just push your JavaScript bundle to that app, and it just runs on their platform. So I think it's great for that, for sort of prototyping and just sort of having to play around with React Native without having to do all the stuff that can make it quite frustrating for newcomers. So yeah, I've played around, have you? Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering which, like, what's the Yeah, it's like, it's like the React React app. Ugh, create React app. It's good for like having to play around. I wouldn't bet a production application on it at all. And it's very limited in its scope because Expo has their own sort of abstraction on React components, which uh, React Native components, which does, um, they do add some more stuff, but they also take away a lot of customizability, which is what I hate. So I, I started off uh, I started off with React Native with a starter kit, but I don't know if I'm thinking other things. Some starter kit, and I ended up rewriting the whole thing because I hated it. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah, any other questions? I'm that good of answer them all. Yeah, I guess we have a question about I'm wondering how is the React Native, like native code can talk to native code, like if you're writing other code, right? Mm -hmm. you have you know, some business logic in Java, yeah. and React Native is actually, as I understand, just for UI, right? Yeah. So oh. how can you consume data model, etc., and send some data back to native code, and consider if you're writing iOS application, so something like this should be done yeah. So how it's managed? Yeah, yeah so uh, one thing I did mention, because I haven't really played around with it much, is that you can integrate React Native code into your existing uh, applications, uh, native apps. So uh, Airbnb and a lot of these companies have been doing that. So I know Airbnb has sort of put React Native into their current apps. About 10% of the app is React Native. And they've released a lot of good tools to make the interaction a lot easier. So they've uh, they've solved the whole problem of navigation between the two, native code and uh, React Native. Um, I can't integrate because I don't know too much about it, but you can talk between the two, and they've solved a lot of those problems and answered you know, a lot of your questions on that, so, yeah. So if, if you don't want to rewrite your whole app in React Native, you can at least test it by putting some components into it. So yeah, pretty cool like that. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, is your application state in a React Native app all done the same way as like a, a normal React app? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you can also do Redux and all that. Like I, I do that at work. Um, like you can also do Relay too, apparently. I, I, I heard about Relay uh, a while ago. I didn't really look into it, and considering actually doing it for my startup, for my actual project there. So yeah, uh, it's all the same as a React application basically, and a lot of the popular packages will have um, either like compatibility packages, that sort of stuff too. So, yeah. Crickets. <laughs> All righty. Oh, well, good. Thank you. All right, that was